alongside uh, his wife. So little by little, the rows of seats and the pews in the great nave of Westminster Abbey are filling up. Uh, we will leave these images for the moment and return to the barracks where the military too are making their preparations. Let's listen in a little further. military finish their preparations and make their way for the start of today. You're looking at horse guards there, of course, and here the abbey itself, which is obviously looks quite small from this angle, but isn't. We expect there to be 2,000 guests today, uh, leaders from all over the world, major allies, but also perhaps most pertinently countries with whom we don't agree, some of whom have human rights records that are extremely troubling. And it's a reminder that that was a critical part of the Queen's role, to represent us to regimes all over the world. And every prime minister who's spoken about the Queen in the last 10 days has reminded us what a critical part of her job that was, particularly her knowledge and relationship with these world leaders, which they all found uh, an incredibly useful resource. Worth remarking too on the Abbey itself as it begins to fill with the congregation. Um, the view we were just uh, contemplating then was that of the catafalque on which will uh, rest the coffin of Her Late Majesty. Um, very many of the congregation who have been arriving early this morning are seated in the nave, uh, the choir beyond the great brood screen will be filled, of course, with members of the royal family whose arrival uh, will, we will witness uh, a lot later. Great ceremonial preparations too for the clergy involved here. We know that, of course, the Archbishop of Canterbury will give the sermon during the funeral service, which will be led by the Dean of Westminster, the very Reverend David Hoyle. And what a day it is indeed for them to prepare for not only the service for the funeral here at the Abbey, but a little later in the day here at Windsor Castle, 
uh, in St George's Chapel, the service of committal. Uh, as dignitaries and indeed the foreign royals begin to arrive, I might bring in uh, Hugo uh, to comment on the fact that across Europe in particular, the arrival of the foreign yes, royal family. We're actually seeing members of the, of the household. We just saw, well, there we see on the screen Tom Parkerbells. We just saw the retired Lord Great Chamberlain, the Marquis of Chumley whose uh, job ceased immediately that the Queen died. He was present at the opening of Parliament carrying the Imperial State Crown, but he has been replaced for this reign by Lord Carrington, son of Peter Carrington. And we also saw one or two ladies in waiting arriving. So this, as we can see unmistakably, the President of the United States' vehicle. critical ally of ours, somebody who spoke incredibly fondly about the Queen in the last week. We were lucky to have her, he said, and I think many of you today will say amen to that. Very delicate operation for all of those who are given the duty for navigating these arrivals in these coming uh, minutes. Who sits where and next to whom, all part of the critical planning for the day. For the day. President Biden, of course, one of 14 US presidents during Her Late Majesty's reign. Very many notable moments, of course, in recent memory when former presidents have visited here and been made welcome at Windsor Castle. Not least, of course, most recently, President Biden and his wife, Jill, uh, themselves, who've both recounted wonderful ta tales of taking tea with the Queen and her generosity with the cakes and sandwiches uh, provided for them. They've smiled and reflected on that with great warmth in these most recent days. Um, the very Reverend uh, David Hoyle, Dean of Westminster, a few moments with the President before they too will be led to their seats. Chris, maybe this is a, as we watch the American president chatting by the Great West Door. Chris, perhaps this is a moment to bring you back in and remind us just how many US presidents the Queen knew and how many governments really relied on her very subtle diplomatic skills and making sure that relationship remained consistently that of our closest ally. Yes, Tom, I've been struck in recent days just by how many uh, prime ministers, but also how many world leaders have uh, himself of not um, a young age, but someone who, who spoke about the, the great warmth and affection and counsel he got from the Queen that she built, built up over so many years uh, in that role. And um, it was a real moment to see him yesterday inside Westminster Hall, uh, standing next to the coffin paying his respects to the Queen. And he's arriving at Westminster Abbey almost a full hour before the coffin of the Queen will be brought here on that state gun carriage. Some time to wait, of course, but a 
good moment of reflection, I think, for for the president. And he'll join the many former prime ministers who will also be in Westminster Abbey, who themselves had that weekly audience with the Queen. Uh, we should remark, uh, just as we see another uh, glimpse there of the president, uh, Bill, to bring you in there, part of the procession, a very important part of the profession, those of holders of the Victoria Cross and the George Cross. Uh, that's right. In fact, in the centre of the screen there, you can see uh, Sergeant Johnson Bahari, Victoria Cross, uh, and before him were members of who have been awarded the, the George Cross, which is the civilian version. Uh, and also in the main procession, the three organisations that have received the George Cross will be represented, Malta, Royal Ulster Constabulary and the NHS, most recently awarded. And Hugo. And we're reminded, of course, that this is a state funeral, so you will also have seen representatives of the senior um, grades of the Orders of Chivalry coming in. Um, saw certainly the three members of the Order of the Garter, um, Lady Manningham Buller, the Marks of Salisbury, and uh, Baroness Amos, and before them there were also three members of the Order of the Thistle. Um, to say a reminder that this is in fact a state funeral. The well, first one since that of Sir Winston Churchill in 1965. Just uh, behind them we saw the procession of the faiths, the leaders of uh, the faiths across the United Kingdom, which had, all of whom had been welcomed uh, so warmly by the new king on Saturday evening. That's the Cardinal Archbishop of uh, Westminster, the Catholic Cardinal Archbishop of Westminster, Vincent Nichols. Um, a little earlier, we saw the Pope's representative, Archbishop Paul Gallagher, in attendance representing Pope Francis. The anthem, My Soul There Is A Country, is sung to the music of Hubert Parry, a favourite composer of King Charles. seen him in operation. 